delighted to say that I'm joined now by uh, Fergal Sharkey, former vocalist for punk band The Undertones and passionate campaigner for our waterways. Good morning, Fergal Sharkey. Now, Pete, a lot, of people, a lot of people will be going, hang on a minute. He was that singer. <laughs> he is that singer that I love. What has he got to do with this topic? But you are a very passionate vocal advocate, aren't you, for, for clean waterways? How did you get involved? It's a perfectly valid question to be asking. Um, I have a terrible habit since childhood of standing on the banks of river, waving fly rods around my head, rather in inefficiently, I have to say. But as a result, for 50 years now, I've had a passion for rivers, their health, what we do to them, how we treat them. And invariably, five or six years ago, that passion has now boiled over into voicing and venting my frustration and anger with what we're doing to our rivers and our seas. So what have you seen over that period of time, Fergal, that's made you so incensed? What's changed? Uh, well, it is quite simply, the easy statistic I can give you is there is not a single river in England that currently achieves good overall environmental health. Every single river in the country is polluted, and one of the largest sources of that pollution is the water industry. So not only is our coast, as the video you're illustrating, all of that sewage is washing down the river, uh, rivers into the sea, and that simply gets added to the sewage that's currently being discharged directly onto our beaches. Ultimately, what we're looking at here is three decades of underinvestment by the water industry and their infrastructure, profiteering by the companies concerned, a complete failure of regulation on the part of Offwat and the Environment Agency, and a complete vacuum when it comes to the political oversight and control of this industry. It has to stop. Which, given that the average water company executive salaries and bonuses rose by 21% between 21 to 22, according to uh, research by the Lib Dems, a year-on-year -year average rise per executive of nearly £200,000 per person. I, just, I do wonder how these people sleep at night. I know that's not a very, very sort of political question to give you, but on a personal <laughs> level, how, how do they sleep at night knowing what is happening to our environment whilst taking such a vast income from these projects? Uh, well, I suspect when you've been paid £3 million a year quite comfortably, is clearly you have a wide range of bedding and mattresses to choose from for that kind of salary. <laughs> to give your viewers a bit of insight here, Water companies have paid their shareholders over £72 billion. That is our money. And you are right. Over the last three years, I think, the largest paid executives took home £50 billion or £50 million between them. And yes, last, last year, as you've touched upon, in fact, over the last two years, water companies have spent almost £6 million hours on over 775,000 separate occasions, dumping sewage into our rivers. The truth is, the water industry is the only industry I can see where your performance bonus is directly and inversely proportional to how competent and good you are at your job. Clearly, the more hopeless you are, the bigger the bonus. Oh, well, it does, it does look that way. We're showing a map on our screen now, which is one of the graphics that the brilliant Surfers Against Sewage do. I've been a big fan of that organisation for several years. And they're showing all along the south coast at the moment, all the beautiful areas which so many people will be going to. It's August, you know, from some Bournemouth and Brighton all the way along, um, Dorset, uh, South Devon and Cornwall. Is anybody responsible for, for, for this not happening, Fergal? Like, who, sure, it just feels like, where, where is the adult in the room in this story? Who is going to hold them? Who is going to hold them to account? Whose responsibility is it? Should there be penalties against them? What should we be doing? Uh, well, that is the job of the regulators. That's why they're there. Bearing in mind, these companies are operating state-granted monopolies. You as a customer have no decision at all in who provides you with your water. You're stuck with the water company that you're allocated. Now, the truth is, that's why we have regulators. The Ofwat are there to uh, regulate the economic activity of these industries to make sure they're not profiteering at our expense. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a fail. And the Environment Agency, who are supposed to make sure these water companies are not 
having a harmful impact on the environment. Well, clearly that's a massive big fail as well. Mm. To give you an indication, right now the Secretary of State could fix all of this with nothing more than the stroke of a pen. He can order off what to issue what's called enforcement orders, and that is a binding legal instruction to the water companies to do exactly what they want, when they want, how they want it done. And if the water companies do not comply or fail to deliver on that legal mandate, off what has then the power to find these companies up to 10% of their annual turnover. And I, I am- strongly suspect. Yeah, I, I'm just, no, no, I was going to say, I'm just so tired of, of spineless regulatory bodies apparently in collusion with these companies. I have to give you the statement from Southern Water. Obviously, they aren't here. Like- they, they wish to say in a statement that heavy rain was to blame for sewage releases. <laughs> and this was done to protect homes and businesses from potential flooding. In your vast knowledge, what does that mean to you and why should that be avoidable, Fogel Sharkey? Uh, well, the, the, the reality of the situation is the UK government was actually taken to court in 2012. And the Court of Justice ruled that dumping sewage into the environment is illegal, save for exceptional situations. Now, with Southern Water in particular, over the last two years, they've spent over 360,000 hours dumping sewage into the environment on almost 40,000 separate locations. Any of that exceptional? In fact, the regulators wrote to the water companies last year, reminding them of their legal obligations, that they are supposed to build, operate, and maintain sewage systems capable of dealing with the contents of those sewers, no matter what's in there, or indeed no matter how it got in there. The Mm. regulator went on to say that water companies have been paid all of the funding needed for 30 years to meet that legal obligation. Well, clearly they haven't been spending on the sewage system, which then begs the question, what happened to money? Well, we know where that's gone. Executive salaries and bonuses and the shareholders. 